Greetings, pen pals. We have a fairly new pen from Jinhao here. This is the Jinhao Centennial. Now this is actually, in terms of Jinhao pens, not a particularly cheap pen. It's a $20 pen, um, um, but we'll go through it and see why. I think it's a very, very nice, uh, nice uh, pen and a really, really good offering from Jinhao. Now those of you who are vintage pen enthusiasts are gonna take one look at this and say, hey, wait a minute, is that a Parker Duofold? And um, I wouldn't blame you for thinking it looks like one because here's an actual Parker Duofold from the mid 1920s. So it's not quite 100 years old, it's about 95 years old or so. And you, as you can see, both size wise, color wise, style wise, and everything else, uh, this pen is very much meant to emulate a Parker Duofold. Um, when we talk about a duofold style pens that usually means any kind of pen with that's cylindrical with flat tops and usually black contrasting uh, caps on um, finials on either end. Now, this pen is a little more than duofold style. This is really uh, duofold emulating. It's not a counterfeit pen by any means. It's not marked as a Parker pen or anything like that. So anybody who's a uh, knows much about duofolds would take one look at it and says, yes, it looks a lot like a duofold, but it is definitely not uh, meant to counterfeit a du Parker duofold. But they did a pretty nice job, especially matching the color and whatnot. It's a, it's a, um, it's a resin pen and it is pretty nice. Um, th on the um, one big difference is uh, on the genuine Parker duofold, this cap screws off and gives you access to the button filling mechanism. Whereas this Jinhao pen is a, uh, as you probably uh, expect, is a cartridge converter uh, filled uh, filled pen. Um, <clears throat> but let's go through it. It's a really, really nice pen, and um, I like it quite a bit, and I, I think you might as well. Um, it has a pretty wide cap band that just simply says Jin Hao on it. It has a clip that very, very much emulates the clip on the Duofold. It does have a Jin Hao logo on it, but it's one of these severe v-shaped clips with a ball at the end that is very very nice if you're familiar at all with say a lot of pilot modern pilot pens like a pilot custom a23 for example has a very very similar um, clip um, we have a finial on the end which has a the jinhao logo the chariot jinhao logo inset into a bronze disc which looks really 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 nice um, it is a, like I said, it's a predominantly resin pen. It's not super, super light, weighs 30 grams because there's a decent amount of metal elsewhere in the pen. So it's, it's got some heft to it. It doesn't feel like a cheap pen at all. In fact, it feels, um, um, like a, like a pretty nice, well-made, well-made, uh, pen. Um, it is a screw to uncap. It takes two and three quarter turns to, um, to unscrew and it does post uh doesn't post really deep but it posts quite solidly you do end up with quite a long pen when you post it so it, to me it's just barely enough to use unposted but i really really prefer to post my pen so i do i do post this um the section is kind of small but it is comfortable it's sort of like an hourglass uh shaped uh, section with a little bit of flare on the end um has a little gold trim ring um, at the end of the section and the threads are really, really unobtrusive. You don't feel them at all. So you can really grip this pen almost anywhere. Like if you wanted to actually grip it on top of the threads, even that, that really wouldn't be a problem. Cause like I said, it's, it's very, very smooth, but it's a comfortable, comfortable to hold uh, pen. Now the nib, the nib is a typical Jinhao number six nib that's found in a lot of Jinhao pens. It's, this nib is in medium and it is a very, very nice writing pen as we'll see. It's got some scroll work. It's a two-tone nib. It's got some scroll work. The Jinhao logo says Jinhao and it says 18K GP, but you could take that with a grain of salt. It is a steel nib and it has a ordinary, um, um, unimpressive plastic uh, feed. Um, now this, what's slightly different from this than other Jinhao pens, the nib and feed go into a nib unit, which is then threaded into the section. So it's a little more sort of upgraded manufacturing than you see on some of the, the $4, $5, uh, Jinhao, uh, Jinhao pens. But, um, it is, it is, like I said, made very nicely, really, um, the, the, the resin f has just a really good feel to it. It feels like a, a really high quality product. And like I said before, this is a cartridge converter fill pen, and it does come with the converter. Unfortunately, no eye dropping here. You've got all this going on back here, and there's also some metal in here as well. So no eye dropping, but very, very nice pen nonetheless. 
Um, one thing you should be aware of is that there's actually a knockoff of this floating around in the marketplace. So do not be confused. So there is, this is the genuine Gin House Centennial, and then there is this horror, which has been floating around in the marketplace. Um, I wasn't even planning on buying this pen, but one of my fellow YouTubers actually did a very nice, fairly comprehensive review of this pen. Uh, and really, uh, obviously, uh, didn't have a lot favorable to say about it, but I was just really kind of curious about how bad it could possibly be, and it's pretty bad. Um, it, this is a heavy metal pen, and the metal is not even like enameled. It just looks like it's painted on. I mean, it's really, really very crudely done. They, they're advertising this as a Jinhao 001, I believe. I'm pretty sure this isn't even a Jinhao pen. Um, the, the nib is unlabeled. Um, just really not really well made at all. The threads on the cap don't even thread right. They like cross thread every time you you thread it in. Um, one thing they did, which is really kind of strange, is they have sort of this half-assed captive converter thing going on. You unscrew this and it gives you access to this knob, but that knob, like I said, it's really more of a captive converter type system that no, or pseudo captive converter system. All that knob is, is a little extension piece on the back end of the converter. I mean, I, get, I guess it works, but I just don't get the point to it really. I mean, it's not, it doesn't really accomplish much of anything. Again, don't, this is sort of a heavy metal, not particularly great pen. Don't be confused by this. This is the genuine Gin House Centennial. This is sort of a knockoff. This is like an homage to the Parker Duofold and a pretty nice one at that. This is sort of a knockoff of an homage. You don't really want to deal with that. One thing that this does have though is this has an almost exact emulation of the cap band of genuine Parker Duofolds of this era. Parker Duofolds is definitely not something I want to go into in this video, but one way you can date them is by the style of the cap band because that did change uh, over the years. So for Parker Duofolds of this era have a cap band that looks like this and they actually did a pretty good job at least on the knockoff of, uh, of emulating that. But that's about the only nice thing I could say about it because this, this, this is not a pen you want to be getting. The, um, the Centennial on the other hand is, um, is pretty nice. Um, let's also do a size comparison while we're at it. So as we said, it, um, it is pretty much spot on size wise of a genuine uh, Parker Duofold. Um, just for completeness sake, let's look at it uh, against a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan. As you can see, these are all pretty much spot on. So we're talking about a very conventionally sized pen, although as you can see, it is a bit girthier than, than, any, of, um, than any of these guys. Um, well, that is about all I have to say about this pretty, pretty nice a uh, $20 pen from uh, Jinhao, but as we have always said over and over and over again, pens were meant to write. And I'm sure you want to see how this pen writes, and you're going to get to see that right now. Okay, folks, what we're writing with here is a Jinhao. Centennial. And this uh, pen has a steel nib in medium. And, you know, like I said, this, this Jinhao number six nib, oh yeah, it, it is a number, it is a number six nib. So just to give you an idea of the size of this nib, here it is, uh, let's compare it with a, a Pilot Metropolitan nib. Um, as you can see, it's a pretty beefy, nice size nib. Um, uh, this uh, this Jinhao number six nib seldom disappoints me, but if it does, it's definitely one of the easiest nibs to tune yourself. Quite forgiving, etc. Uh, matter of fact, very often people who want to take up nib meistering, this be, they'll buy themselves a whole bunch of these uh, Jinhao number six nibs and use these for practice because they're they're fairly cheap. They're again easy to get and. Um, Again, they're quite easy to work with and quite forgiving. So this is just a nice nib. Um, I really, really like the way it writes. It's extremely smooth. It's nicely wet. I'd say it's definitely on the on the wet side. Um, so it's a, like we said, it's a smooth nib. It's a wet nib. It uh, the pen itself flows very, very well. Um, very, very nice. So this nib and this feed are actually quite uh, common in Jinhao pens. This particular Jinhao pen, actually, the nib and feed 
um, screw into a nib holder, which then in turn threads into the section. So the nib and feed don't go directly into the section. There's a threaded uh, nib holder that uh, uh, they go into, and then that screws uh, in. So there's a lot of, you know, nice sort of upgraded manufacturing details to this than you might see on a typical 5 or $10 Chinese-made pen. And again, really, really um, uh, writes nicely. I like the way it feels in the hand. The section is a little small, but these threads, by the way, are incredibly smooth. There's like almost nothing there. So you can pretty much comfortably hold this almost anywhere. Like if you really wanted to hold it on top of the threads, you could even do that without too much uh, without too much difficulty. So, again, a very comfortable pen. Like it quite a bit, um, and um, uh, you know, it's it's a nice nib. Now, in terms of flex, you're not really going to get much of anything. You could like really squeeze out a tiny bit of line variation here, but this is not not a flexy nib. You can take these nibs and grind them down to a stub and stuff yourself if you really want to, by the way. They're, that's definitely doable and it, uh, people have done that. Um, you could also replace it um, like Goulet makes number six nibs and stubs and stuff like that. So I've done that with other Jinhao pens that take the number six nib. You could buy other number six nibs and replace them with that. Um, Jovo nibs, etc., will work uh, as well. So it's a standard number six nib, and um, um, it can be easily upgraded and replaced if that's um, if that's what you want to uh, if that's what you want to do. I think that's about it for this pen. Let's take a quick look at this ink now. Okay, this ink is Diamine Autumn Oak. So this is basically sort of a nice sort of dark orange ink with a little sort of brownish and yellowish highlights and overtones. Again, sort of like oak leaves as they turn in the autumn. Um, it's a very, very pretty ink. It's a pretty well-known and pretty popular uh, ink. One issue with this ink, and sometimes a lot of inks that are sort of have oranges and browns in them, you got sometimes if you've had it in the pen for a while and you leave it, it does have a tendency to get a little crusty. I wouldn't worry. I mean, personally, I don't worry about that too much. It can be rinsed off very easily. It's not like it's going to really damage anything. Um, I might not use this ink in like a vintage pen with a sack or anything like that, just because it's not that it's going to really do any damage. It's just going to be a little more difficult to clean. But again, um, uh, other than the crustiness, there's a really nice ink. You get a bit of shading on it. It's uh, just a nice, nice, very pretty, pretty uh, ink. Um, and... Um, I like it quite a bit. I've used it for quite a few years. Um, and again, this is a very, very popular, very well-known ink. Might be one of the most well-known inks that Diamine uh, sells. So very, very nice, popular ink, Autumn Oak. Um, that's what it looks like on this Rhodia paper. Let's take a quick look at what this ink looks like on Tomori River paper. Okay, as we said, this ink is Diamine. Autumn Oak. And you can definitely pick up uh, some shading, etc., uh, on this Tomoe River paper. Even on the Rhodey paper, you get a bit of shading. So it goes from sort of like a, a pale orange to a darkish orange into like a, a reddish brown color. So it's it's definitely definitely a nice looking ink. Um, again, explains its popularity. It's just a really pretty pretty color. Um, it goes well with this pen too. If I don't mind me saying. So just a nice, nice, really pretty ink. And um, um, it should really be a part of everybody's ink collection, I would say. So I think that will just about do it for this week's video. I certainly hope you enjoyed watching it. I know I certainly enjoyed making it. If you're not a subscriber, I would like to humbly suggest that you become one. Give us a thumbs up or two. Leave us a comment or two. That's always appreciated. And as always, until we see each other again, have a great day. Bye-bye.